Hey, this is Don W6 GPS. We're going to talk a little bit more about uh, APRS. And you're saying, hey, what is APRS? Well, APRS is Automatic Packet Reporting System. Now, some people have used Auto Position Reporting System, and that's just not right. This is more than just a tracker. Anyway, it's APRS, Automatic Packet Reporting System. It was developed in the 70s by Bob Berninga, WB4 APR. And he had a goal of developing a tactical, real-time information distribution system using APRS. APRS can send messages, telemetry, weather, info, short text messages, and even short emails. But majority we use is to send a beacon so people know where we're at. So majority of it is a transmit position reports. You can receive the packets radio, radio, or through what they call a digipeter. Digipeter is like a repeater, but it's on the same frequency. Basically, the information is stored in a buffer. As soon as it can uh, retransmit it, it will. Some packets make it to the internet, internet through a thing called an eye gate, uh, which then passes that information to the APRS, IS, or internet server. And websites like APRS.fi can process the information and display it on an online map. APRS is a bi-directional exchange of information and there's a lot more to it than just being a tracker. Because your Kenwood is a D-Star radio, you're going to hear some terms like DPRS. Uh, DPRS is not APRS. It's something totally different and that's going to be explained in another video. Remember, APRS and DPRS are two different modes of operation and two different modes of information exchange. For those that have used uh, APRS radio in the past, like a 72 or a 710 mobile, setup is very, very similar. We are going to assume that the radio has already been reset to its defaults. And folks, I'm only going to adjust the things that you have to adjust. I'll be skipping over some things. So, first thing we want to do is go down here to menu 900, my, menu 900, and we want to turn the display on. And the reason we want to have it on is because is because you see that's 900 is we're going to adjust it and we're going to leave it on on all the time go back out to the menus uh, we're going to go ahead and enter our frequency i'm going to use the b band for aprs and uh, we go back into the menus here to menu 400 and you can see at the uh, different icons scrolling around here, 400. We're going to turn that down. And the GPS basic settings, we want to go ahead and turn the GPS on. And I want to go ahead for right now, uh, turn the battery saver off. And the reason is, uh, it's just something to eliminate, to get used to the, how it works. It's just something to eliminate, but basically battery save turns the GPS on every now and then it gets a little what they call a warm fix. So now then we exit out of here and then we're going to go to uh, menu 500 which is the APRS menu. Going to do basic settings. Right now it says no call and we're going to enter our call sign. So just back that. Use the AB button back it out. Now you can't see it but but on top of that right up here is an encoder. You can dial. You can dial this way. You can also um, use the um, uh, keypad to enter. So W six G P S. All right. So once we get the uh, call sign, <coughs> we go down to an icon. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll just leave this for a person right now. And then we're going to uh, a comment. We'll just leave that as uh, in service. Now status text, this is, um, this is uh, something where you can put like a little message like uh, going to Dayton or something that when you transmit, and we'll, we'll show you this uh, later on. Uh, Kevin's gonna help me out on this. Uh, it, there's a message that comes up in the line. So we're going to uh, Go, first of all, let me get back into it. Back into basic settings and back to status text. Okay, and 
I'm going to use number one. I'm going to change the rate to uh, one point, one to one actually. And the reason is, is if you have it like one to five, every five beacons, then the status text shows up first. So for just right now, we're just going to go ahead and just put, uh, put that beaconing every time. And we're just going to put a simple message, uh, just a simple message we want to put in here. Uh, and it's going to be a short one. Hi. Okay, so that's, and then you hit the use button. Back out of, back out of that. And then we're going to go to uh, menu uh, 504. Five. There's the numbers up here. 04. And that's packet path. Now, for right now, we're just going to leave uh, the packet path and we're going to leave that uh, just as the default. But this is where you can set up different paths. And like right here, you can have a couple custom ones, like if you want to use uh, for satellite communications. And we'll explain that in another video. Uh, data speed, not to be confused, uh, uh, but the data speed is 1200. Uh, always use 1200. There's very, very rare instances that you'll use uh, uh, 64 or 6, 9600, but you can't do that. Now, I like to use band B, so select band B and um, go down to 510. It's going to be another, going to have to move that over there and that to uh, method. Uh, for right now, there's, there's different methods. There's manual, and that's manually sending it. That's what I like to use at a ham fest, to send a beacon every now and then. Push to talk or auto, and that's where it would be at a, at a uh, fixed time, a variable of time, and smart beacon. Now, I use smart beaconing in the car, and I just use the defaults. But just for this demonstration, we're just going to use the uh, manual mode right now. Uh, speed, I'm going to turn the speed on. Altitude on. Gets a little funny here. If you Altitude on. And then we want to back out to QSY information. Now we're just going to ahead and turn this information on. At the end of the video, I'm going to show you why you want to have uh, QSY on. So you want to turn uh, all the, Q the uh, QSY on. Now there is a QSY limit distance. So I turn that off. But like if you just want to have QSY information for a local area, you can just dial that, dial that to... Um, to let's say 10 miles and only you'll only get QSY information within that 10 miles. 572 special call. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and put Kevin because he's sitting here helping me out. Uh, but special call is if you get a beacon from that station um, you'll get a different type of, of sound and uh, we'll show you how that works. So KI four I know this is a little bit slow, but it's, it's really not that bad. All right, and Kevin's using a SID of two. So we go ahead and do that. Special call. Uh, 575, we want to go, and that's APRS voice. And you're saying, what is that? Basically, if you get a message, uh, it'll announce uh, what, where the, what the call is, the, who the message is from. Um, and we want to go ahead and turn the beacon on. Oh, but you know what I forgot to do? You know, it's not beaconing. That's because... I've got it set to the A band. So folks, if you uh, are trying to get the thing to work, first thing you want to check is um, menu 506. And that's something that I forgot to do, and that's what happened. So 506, I got that set on the B band, right? Okay, and we don't have a GPS fix. That's another thing. 
So if you don't have a GPS fix, uh, you won't uh, be able to transmit. So first of all, and the next thing we want to do while we're waiting for a fix is we want to go ahead and put it into APRS, uh, APRS uh, mode and you hit function. And that's, uh, that's what I did wrong at the very beginning, folks, was I didn't put it in APRS. So hit function and then uh, list and you'll see the APRS 12 show up. So we're gonna take a breather, wait till we get a fix, and then we'll uh, move right on. Okay, so I've been waiting here for five minutes for a satellite to fix, and I did not get a fix, so I'm just gonna go ahead and manually, tell you how to manually put in a um, location. So we go to menu, go to the GPS menu right here, go to basic settings, and there's uh, my position. You can select that and then tune it just like that. I've already entered in my information. So for this demonstration purpose, you can use the GPS fix, but if you're in the basement doing this, go ahead and get your coordinates and put them in here, hit the use button and then uh, back out. And I will say that if you are gonna be using a fixed position, and uh, not using the GPS, uh, why don't you go ahead and turn the GPS off, okay? So, now then, we've uh, got a list of, of uh, stations right here, and uh, there's some information just toggling through here. You can see how clear it is, different stations and activities. Uh, just remember, if you go into the list, you need to use the list to come out. Uh, you can get hung up um, what do I do? So basically if you go in, push a button to go into a menu, you need to use that same button to come out. So next thing we do is we're going to turn on uh, beaconing and we're, because we are doing manual and it did go to the KA4EMA uh, Digipeter and it beaconed back. It showed my information right here um, and it showed uh, the information in my radio. So that's what a digipeter does, is it sends it back. Now, if you were to go into, um, again, this is a manual, I'm doing a manual beacon, okay? And I'm pushing the beacon button. But if you wanna go back into uh, transmit control, go back into APRS, go to TX control, and let's just say um, uh, we're gonna go ahead and do, uh, we're gonna do smart beaconing for right now. Then when you turn it on, Anything but push to talk or beak or um, uh, manual to get to beacon out. You need to have that beacon uh, going. So we're uh, we're watching activity. We got various stations right here, and uh, got a uh, here's pretty good. Um, let me see if I can tune this in. It says tune. That would that 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 station had the right uh, format for information. And that's what that QSY information is all about. So I can go in here to the menu and hit tune, and then I'm already tuned to that frequency. So if you've got a friend of yours you're looking for, you can see him in the APRS list, uh, hit the tune, and then you, you can QSY uh, real quick. Okay, so uh, we've been sitting here for just a couple minutes to get some APRS activity. I'm just showing you different, going through these different screens. Um, there's a uh, the distance information. There's a lot of a lot of good information here uh, that you get sent by APRS. Now, remember when you're in this mode right here to escape out, push list. And what I'm going to do is I got Kevin all set here. He's going to send a message. K I four L A X two. Okay. So remember what I said about um, um, the. Um, uh, menu uh, 575, when that's on and you get a APRS message from someone, it will announce uh, that call sign. Okay, so we're watching some uh, APRS activity. We can go in here to the list, list and see what's going on here. Uh, I have Kevin sent me a beacon. Okay, so now what I can do is I can go up here to Kevin I could select him, KI4LAX. I can hit the word message. I can just do a quick entry 
like Roger Roger, because he asked me about lunch. I said Roger Roger. So uh, we'll just do something real, real simple and send it. So what happened there is we got an acknowledgement from my radio that I got the message and then um, it pinged back and uh, because we have special call signs because we're both special to each other uh, that uh, uh, our, both of our radios responded appropriately so we each heard each other's call sign on the announce to kind of get our attention. So that's what how you can send a message. Uh, you, can, you can also go in here to uh, uh, message. You can uh, send another message here. You can clear out the messages like this. Uh, you can go um, back out, hit the back button, and you can go into uh, uh, function new. And this is where you would input. You would input a, a, a call uh, to a station. Okay, so once you get the call sign in there, hit enter, and then uh, hit the uh, message text, and we'll just do a quick, uh, I'm ready. All right, so once you enter in your information, uh, hit send. Okay, when you get an AC, that AC means that the station that you were sending the APRS message to uh, receive the message. Okay, so another cool thing is I still have Kevin's message in, uh, in the list here. If you hit men menu, you can go over here and actually uh, send a message to hit a, a request to his radio to get a, a position request. All right, and then we go in here to back out of here. To the list and there's Kevin and I got another uh, response I got a forced beacon from him basically to show where he was at so that's kind of cool you can uh, force a, um, a beacon from another radio if they have a message already sent to you okay so now how about an email to send an email all you have to do in the to line is put the word email then in the message, put the address, the email address, with a couple spaces, and then the body of the email. Once you do that, hit the send button, and you'll get an acknowledgement from the DigiPeter that uh, message has been uh, sent to the iGate. Okay, I, you remember what I told you about that voice alert, alert thing? Well, that's why you use voice alert. You hear all that squawking and everything like that? So you go into the APRS menu, into others, voice alert, turn it on. And what happens then is as you get beacons, uh, you don't hear them. Now, if you have APRS traffic going on, and there's all sorts of traffic going on, but you don't hear anything, and then all of a sudden you hear a beacon. That's an indication that someone is uh, close enough to you in simplex rain that you, you can actually make a call. And what you could do is just push the push to talk microphone uh, right here on the side, W6GPS to KI4LAX. And what will happen is, is the person will hear you make a contact. Hey Kevin, let's uh, QSY to uh, 52. Then what you can do is you can actually go over to another frequency. So that's what voice alert does. It kind of keeps that uh, uh, noise out. But if you do hear a burst coming through with voice alert on, that's to let you know that someone's uh, close within simplex range uh, so you can make a contact. After I shot this video, uh, the International Space Station was making a uh, pass over Chattanooga. So I tried for the first time to get my first ISS contact uh, with just a simple five watts of power and the uh, rubber duck antenna on the Kenwood. And to my surprise, it was very, very exciting. And I was able to make contact and pass a message to the International Space Station. K3RLD1. 
Anyway, this is Don, W6GPS. Uh, thank you for your time. I know the video was a little bit long. There is a lot uh, in APRS that we did not cover, but this was just to uh, expand your horizons. So if you need me for anything, give me an email at w6gps at yahoo.com.